All right. You can't see me, but you should be able to hear me. This is Mr. Hanforth, and today I'm going to show you how to make a shachihoko in Tinkercad and in Sculpt GL. The shachihoko is uh, from Japanese folklore. It's supposed to be a fish that has the head of a tiger. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use two models from Thingiverse, the tiger by Yahoo Japan and the fish by Davison 3D to make our shachihoko. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download the two models that I need. The tiger model, there's only one part to it, so I'm going to download that right away. From the fish model, I don't need the eyes in order to make this because we're actually going to take the face off of the front of the fish. So I'm just going to download the very last file, fish-normal-final.stl. Now I'm going to create a new design inside of Tinkercad in which I could work. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm not going to use one of Tinkercad's pre-generated names because as we know, they're not useful. You try and share these files with someone that you're working on a design project with and they will have no idea what's in the file. Likewise, if your teacher's trying to mark what you're doing in your 3D printing class. So what I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm going to rename this. I'm going to name it Shachihoko dash draft one. The reason that I'm putting draft one in this is that I want to be able to see a progression. I want to be able to see what I've done with different projects and we're actually going to switch back and forth between two, pro between two programs today. So those two programs will mean that we won't be able to ungroup some of the files that we've previously grouped. Also, from a marking point of view, I'm giving you guys marks on your organization and showing your progression. So I'm going to want to see both the initial draft and the final design. All right, right off the bat, let's get these uploaded. I'm going to upload the tiger first. Once the arrows show up, you're usually good to put in the second file. I just give it a second to try and let the tiger actually load completely so that you can see it. Once you see it, then you can import the fish as well. And I'd move the tiger to the side so that the fish doesn't show up right on top of it. Now this shachihoko, we can see in the image here that most of the body is based off of the fish. We don't see very much of the fish head. Most of the head then is the tigers. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to isolate that tiger head and that fish head. Apparently my file didn't upload correctly. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking at this tiger and seeing where I want to cut off the rest of its body. Probably I want to do it somewhere around here so that you still see the tiger, but we're not starting to get all of this neck muscle. The nice thing about this fish file though is that it is upturned a bit. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. I'm going to cut mine off in a particular way. If you want to do things a little bit differently, it's your design aesthetic. Okay, I'm going to scale up the tiger and scale down the fish a little bit. The reason I'm doing that is so that they're a bit closer to one another and it looks like I'll probably still have to do some work on the tiger. You can notice as well that the tiger is outlined in red right now. Tinkercad's just taking some time to process the changes. So, I was about to start working on the fish, but it also went to red as well. There we go. Tiger's out of the red, so I'm going to start in with the tiger. 
First thing I do when I'm combining models to make a chimera model is I start to take out as much of the body as I possibly can. That makes these things a bit more wieldy to work with. I'm just waiting because I see that my hold here as well is outlined in red, so I probably don't want to combine things together quite yet. Now I can. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the fish, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this box here to recenter my work plane on the fish. Makes my life a bit easier. Now I don't quite want to take the entirety of the fish's head off. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rotate this at an angle. By angling my hole, I can take just the top off, which is kind of what I want. Might not be able to do it exactly the way I want, but that's okay. And I'm just going to drop this down a bit so that I can get the entirety of that face. Looks like I need to move it up. This entire design process is not something you need to rush. It's okay to make changes in the middle of your design. Take your time to find something that you think is going to look good. It doesn't need to be perfect right away. Experiment, explore, what are your design possibilities? Okay, I'm going to take the legs up to about here. Now I'm going to do this part at an angle so that it's kind of matching what I've done with the fish. Just need to be patient here because both of them are outlined in red. We want them to go back to gray. But we can still start placing holes. Just as long as we don't combine anything together quite yet, it should be okay. Uh, the way that I'm getting these to expand evenly on all sides is I'm holding down shift as I scroll. So if I press down shift and then I adjust the size of the hole, the entire thing adjusts. So I keep the same angle if I know that's the angle I want to make a cut on. And in this case, I've pretty much got it exactly where I want it. Need to bring this one up a little bit. There we go. Okay, we've got our fish back to gray. That's good. And we've got that as well. Okay, I'm going to compare the fish to the whole angle. It's off a little bit, so I'm going to adjust this a little bit more. There's my arrow. About that. I'm not too worried about making it perfect. If I really wanted to, I could do that in a work plane. But I don't. Not quite yet. The reason I don't want it to be quite perfect is I do want there to be a bit of overlap between these models. That's going to help make the next step when we get to Sculpt GL a bit easier. Now I'm going to drop my tiger head and I need to make this bigger. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down Shift until the tiger head is roughly the same size as the fish head or the fish's body. Scale it up a bit more. And this is looking pretty good. Now, from a design point of view, I know what I want to do next. I'm going to start to smooth these over, but I need to add some more shapes in. But I want to keep this hairy bit at the base. So I'm actually going to move it forwards so that that part has moved away a little bit more and that it's not sticking out. It's going to blend a little bit better that way. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. 
and that's looking pretty good. Now an easy way to check, I want to make sure these two shapes overlap. An easy way to check that they overlap is to turn one of them into a hole. So you can see this dark part in the back of the tiger's face. That means that the hole that the fish currently is, is overlapping there. That's a good thing. That means our model's going to blend together well. So I just have to wait a second. But I can actually start adding something else too. I'm going to make a work plane by pressing W. And I'm going to put the plane along the back of the tiger's head. This is a really subtle adjustment I'm about to do, but it's going to help us with our next step. I'm going to get a half sphere, just like this. And I'm going to use this half sphere to try and smooth out the border where these two shapes overlap a bit. It's not going to be perfect, that's okay. We're not aiming for perfection on our first go. We're aiming on making things easier on ourselves. We get a good design out of it. Sculpt GL will be able to do the next bit. Okay, and that blends a bit at the back too. Now, when I first started working with Tinkercad, I'd try and get every little last bit I could with that half sphere, and you can add some more in if you want to. But looking at it now, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to combine all three of these shapes together into one. This is our draft one, and this file I'm going to download now, and I'm going to upload this file to two places. One of them is going to be Classroom. That's so that me, your teacher, can see the progression of your work and how you used our post-editing process. <coughs> Excuse me. That's also going to go over into Sculpt GL. So while we wait for this to download, we might have to wait for it to go gray as well. I'm going to swap over to Sculpt GL. Now it might be that you see a sphere in the middle when you first open Sculpt GL. It'll look kind of like this. If you want to move around in Sculpt GL, right click and drag. If you want to zoom in and out, scroll. If you're using a mouse pad or if you're using a touchpad, it'll be move two fingers up or down. That will move you in or out. Now, when you come into Sculpt GL, you'll likely see that the symmetry button here is clicked. What that does is that makes an object do the same thing on both sides. So you'll likely be set to brush. If you brush the sphere, you'll see that it mirrors it on both sides. We don't actually want to do that with our design. What we want is we want to be able to work on one side at a time to make it asymmetrical because sometimes when our models upload they aren't always symmetrical. So make sure that this symmetry button is unclicked. The other thing you need to do is make sure the scene is clear because now that we have our Sachihoko downloaded, we're going to upload it into Sculpt GL. Now I don't want you to brush with this at all. You'll see that this is quite detailed, but the lines here clearly show where we tried to shove the tiger and the fish together. So what we're going to do is we're going to smooth them over. At Tool, select your smoothing tool. That smoothing tool is going to blend this together. So we're going to use it to make the tiger's face blend with the fish body. Be careful with doing this because you can delete the scales of the fish pretty easily and that's really nice detail. You probably want to keep that in. If you do accidentally blend over some, all you have to do is go back to history, select undo. I'd also try and keep the gills in, but that's a design thing that is up to you. Now this is going to blend everything together to make it look smoother and more organic. It'll actually start to look like this was intentionally designed 
as a single piece, rather than being a remix of two separate pieces. Pretty simple. So that sphere that we added helps to smooth over some of the details down here. And if you want, you can also add in other details as well. We have our tiger fish. If you really want to give him horns, I'm not going to keep mine on it. What you can do, I'm doing this with symmetry because it actually uploaded well, is you could actually start to build it up this way. Bring down the brush's radius. And you'll increase the, or you'll focus in on the build so that it's a little bit smaller. Changes the look of the design a little bit. I'm not going to keep mine like that, actually. I like it without the horns. So I'm just going to undo. But if you wanted to try doing something like that, to add a little more flair to it, you can. So I'm going to download this file now. It'll save as an STL. The important thing with uh, SculptGL is that the file name is always your mesh when you download it. To my knowledge, there's no way to change that. But if you're working with SculptGL a lot, you can manually change it after being downloaded. Now, I'm going to go create a new design. This is going to be my final Sachihoko design. So I'm going to take that mesh that I downloaded and I'm going to import it back into Tinkercad. Once it's imported, I'm going to give this a new name, which is going to be Sh Shachihoko Final. That way I know that this is my final model and not my draft. That's useful for me. It's also useful for anyone who's trying to use this project afterwards. And we'll just have to wait a second. This is one of the times that we have to be patient with Tinkercad. What I also want to do with this is I also want to add a base to it. The reason I want to add a base to it is so that it'll print a bit easier if it has a base. And that's also going to let me adjust the size. So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. About 30 millimeters works. And the reason for that is that's just easier to print. I know I've tried making designs similar to this. It'll print off pretty well at 30 millimeters. I'm going to rename this Shachihoko, but this is going to be final because I've already done my post-production. All I'm doing now is I'm adding the base to it. When you're basing your objects, usually what I do, I like round bases. So I'll get a sphere or a cylinder. I'll drop it down to about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half even of height so that there's a good base but it doesn't take up too much plastic. Then I can just drag this over it. Now again, we want to make sure that the shachihoko actually connects to the base. If it doesn't, then it's not going to print properly. Easiest way, check with a hole. Does the hole actually show Overlap. Yes, it does. That's perfect. You can also change color. I'm just going to shift it around so it's something a little bit less unpleasing to the eye. Last thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to use another type of tool that's useful in Tinkercad. It's the Align tool. What the Align tool allows me to do is it allows me to line things up with one another. So if I wanted to line up two objects so that their sides were in line with one another, I could press the far side. As it is, I'd kind of like this to be centered in the middle. So I'm going to press the middle here, and that's going to align the base with the shachihoko right in the middle of it. 
I could also align it so that the shachihoko was all the way back. You can see roughly where that would be because of the orange outline here. But I've intentionally moved the tail up so that it overlaps back here. So I don't want to move this all the way back. That way I feel like I've got a bit more of a base and a connection to that base. So I know this isn't going to break easily and it probably means it'll print a bit better. If that's all good, I group it as a single object. I kind of like my bases to look different than my models, so I'm going to switch this to multicolor. It doesn't matter for when you download it. Then, now that I have got my Shachihoko with a base, I go to download to 3D printing, download the STL of it, and then I can upload it to Classroom. So for this assignment, I want to see both the draft and the final version of the Shachihoko in your classroom as an assignment. If there's anything that I can change to make the video clearer, please let me know in class. Thanks.